Hi, James Gurney here. What would happen if Super Mario, a super duper colossal Super Mario, were to sit down in front of Pasadena City Hall and interact with people around him? That's the colossal character challenge. To take a real scene, put an imaginary character in it, we've got 12 of the top concept artists and animators from Lightbox Expo, along with 250 other participants who are joining in the fun. Each one of them has a toy or a figurine. This is a chance for art students to learn from industry legends like Aaron Blaze. I gotta call my friend and make sure he's on his way over here. Because um, he's, he's trained to be an animator. And great art teachers like Gary Garaths. Because this is a challenge we don't normally have, to paint what you see, but also add to that what you imagine. And what we want to end up with is a gigantic character in a realistic scene, all lit by the same light and in the same perspective. First, I gotta decide, which character should I do? Should it be the giant robot, the elf alien, my stop-motion character of Mrs. Basher? Or should I go with Super Mario, or Sonic the Hedgehog, or Woody from Toy Story? Or maybe this little action figure from Demon Slayer, Gyu Tomioka. Or perhaps I could do something with Fortnite character Triggerfish. But let's start with Sonic. Release him from his captivity. I'm no mint in the box collector. Let's get him going here. Come on, get to work. Okay, he could be running, leaping over the tops of buildings. Moving at high speed. Go Sonic. Video game come to life. Let's see, if I have him reaching over the building, he could be reaching down, not in a menacing way, but reaching down with his yellow arms. But I gotta make the sky not so blue to allow the blue of his head to shine. Same with Mario's hat. I'll just block in some color here for the building and suggest some of the detail. He's casting a shadow against the base of the tower. The tower is about 206 feet tall, so he's a big guy. I like the one of Mario better, but I want to be able to see his hands. And maybe he should be in profile, facing to the right. Well, let's see, let's start laying him in. You can have his hand out like this, so we can really see his hand. The design for Super Mario is defined by a very small number of pixels, an 8-bit game for the NES, designed by Shigeru Miyamoto. I'm thinking of Mario as a Disney character from the 1930s, with rubber hose arms. But should he look like a giant inflatable, like a Macy's Parade float? Or should he be made to look realistic with pores to his skin? I mean, you could untune him like some people have tried to do. And that just looks freaky. I'd rather he stay cartoony. The surface I'm working on is illustration board and I'm just using the gouache fairly transparently here for the sky. And of course, to balance out Super Mario as a benevolent being, we got to have King Koopa or Bowser, the Dai Mao, in the background, hovering over the scene, emerging from the clouds. Super Mario casting a shadow against the building, which places him in the scene. That shadow is still fairly transparent, but I'll start building up some darks. I need to make his mustache and his eyes. There's so much going on in the building and it's easy to get lost in details. So I'm going to turn on the jets here and I'll paint Mario's red pants and red suspenders. Since we're all hallucinating together, I can ask someone to pose for me holding a phone. Isn't that what we'd be doing? Taking a picture for Instagram. Look at this giant Mario. Let's take a picture for my social media. Okay, so we'll have a couple guys on the left snapping photos. Oh, look, a police car. Police yeah, that's good. I'll put him in. Uh, how about a police car? What would the police presence be? I'll park him there near Mario's foot because he has to do an incident report. And there we go. People climbing into his hands, having a good time. Just another day in Pasadena. 
If you want to learn more about animation or planar painting or concept art, come to Lightbox Expo in October in Pasadena. And on my website, I've got some videos that take you right through the detailed process from start to finish of painting fantasy in the wild. Be sure you subscribe to my channel so you don't miss a single video. I've got a related video on the lower left and a binge watching playlist on the lower right.